Today we are going to review the chapter four about right speech, right action, right likelihood. So for this part, I'm going to speed up. Yeah, I'm just going to go through each of the components, starting from right speech. So what constitutes right speech? The first one is the one that we recite every morning. Abstaining from false speech. Panati pata veramat Musa wada. What was it again? Musa wada veramani sikapadang samadhi ami. This is the one that we recite every morning. We avoid false speech, abstain from it. We speak the truth. Devoted to the truth, reliable, worthy of confidence, not a deceiver of people. Being at a meeting or amongst people, or in the midst of his relatives, or in a society, or in the king's court, called upon and asked as witness to tell what he knows. He answers, If he knows nothing, I know nothing. If he knows, he answers, I know. If he has seen nothing, he answers, I have seen nothing. And if he has seen, he answers, I have seen. Thus, he never knowingly speaks a lie, either for the sake of his own advantage or for the sake of another person's advantage or for the sake of any advantage whatsoever. Uh, here, the keyword is knowingly. Can someone unknowingly tell a lie? Yeah, possible. Uh, for example, let's say I thought there are 10 oranges in the fridge. Then let's say my housemate asked me, how many oranges are there in the fridge? Yeah. But unknowingly, someone has taken two oranges out of the fridge. But I still tell them, oh yeah, there were uh, there was 10 oranges in the fridge. Yeah. But in fact, because someone took out two oranges, then it becomes eight. So in my mind, I still genuinely believe that there are 10 oranges in the fridge. That's why I tell you, oh, there are 10 oranges in the fridge. So unknowingly, I speak a lie. Mm, but perhaps I can be more precise in the way I praise the answer as well. Like, I can tell him, instead of just directly, 10 oranges, I can tell him. Last time I checked, there were 10 oranges in the fridge. Yeah. So by being more precise, last time I checked, so until this moment, I haven't checked, so the number might change. Yeah. So you can also skillfully praise your word so that you don't uh, unknowingly speak a lie. That's abstaining from false speech. The second one, slanderous speech. Pisunaya wachaya veramani. He avoids slanderous speech and abstains from it. What he has heard here, he does not repeat there, so as to cause dissension there. And what he has heard, there, he does not repeat here, so as to cause dissension here. Thus, he unites those that are divided and those that are united, he encourages. Concord gladdens him, he delights and rejoices in concord, and it is concord that he spreads by his words. Yeah, let's define concord. Agreement or harmony between people or groups. So it's a, another word for harmony. So what actually is slender speech? By the way, this whole chunk of paragraph is from the sutta itself. Slender speech is speech intended to create enmity and division, to alienate one person or group from another. The motive behind such speech generate aversion resentment of a rival's success or virtues, 
the intention to tear down others by verbal denigrations. There can be other motives, intention of causing hurt to others, evil desire to win affection for oneself, pervasive delight in seeing friends divided. Uh, this part most noticeably usually sometimes among colleagues. Some colleagues, there is tendency to do or to talk about other colleagues in a, in a bad light, yeah? in a bad manner. Uh, usually one thing that I can do is that, well, you can talk about it, but I would not participate in your discussion. Yeah. I would just listen quietly and silently. Um, this is one way. Uh, the worst part about slender speech is that There is a root of hate with an unwholesome karma. And there is also premeditation effect. And it's even worse when the slanderous statement is false. The two wrongs of falsehood and slander combine to produce an extremely powerful unwholesome karma. Yeah. You intentionally divide people and then you say false statement about them too. Here says the text records several cases when the calumny of an innocent party led to an immediate rebirth in the plane of misery. Yeah. Here calumny is another word of slander. The making of false and defamatory statements about someone in order to damage their reputation, slander. And at least in Singapore, when someone slander you, well, you can make a case, go to the court, file for defamation. And then you might be awarded some amount of money. So in this way, the law reflects the, yeah, the wrongness of Slender, slender. Now the, the third kind of speech, abstaining from harsh speech, he avoids harsh language and abstains from it. He speaks such words as are gentle, soothing to the ear, loving such words as go to the heart and are cautious, friendly, and agreeable to many. Uh, among the youth, you will probably notice this trend that they like to speak or they like to curse. You know? They like to utter cursing words. Uh, me included, uh, at least in the past, it was much more frequent. You know? Well, the reason I do it in the first place, there are two reasons. I think it's because the people around me were doing the same thing. You know? My group of friends, high school friends at least. Secondly, I thought it was a cool thing to do. But as I grow up, I find that, oh, this is actually not so nice thing to do. So I have reduced my frequency by many four. And occasionally, sometimes it, I blurt it out as well, but I try to restrain myself. Uh, but usually most of the time, the intention is not to cause pain. It's just out of habit. Mm, let's take a look at what other form. For the first one is ab abusive speech, scolding, reviling, or reproving another, angrily with bitter words. Second one is insult, hurting another by ascribing to him some offensive quality which detracts from his dignity. The third one is sarcasm. This is the favorite way, one of the favorite way of my father. <laughs> when, when he quarrels with my mom, wow, all kinds of sarcasm. 
words out of his mouth. Speaking to someone in a way which ostensibly lauds him, but with such a tone or twist of praising that the ironic intent becomes clear and causes pain. These are the three types of harsh speech. Uh, let's go to uh, this line you will frequently see on the sutta, which is quite famous too. Even if monks, robbers, and murderers saw yeah, through your limbs and joints, whosoever should give way to anger, their ad would not be following my advice, the Buddha says. For us, out you to train yourselves undisturbed so our mind remains with heart full of love and free from any hidden malice. And that person shall we penetrate with loving thoughts, wide, deep, boundless, free from anger and hatred. Yeah, imagine if you are cornered and someone is sawing through your lips. What is our usual normal reaction? Ah, so painful, why do you do this to me? Screw you. All kinds of perversion, hatred, all arises. Why, why are you doing this to me? What did I do wrong to you? Yeah, our normal wordlings reaction. But for the enlightened ones, even when they are put to such a tough situation, no anger or hatred arises in them. Instead, even in that condition, loving thoughts is radiated towards that person. Some of you might think, how, why, how can you be so foolish? You know? Radiating love towards the people who hurt you and this one is objectively hurting you, physically sowing through your lips. Of course, practically, if you can run away, <laughs> everyone would run away. But we're talking about the condition where you are cornered and running away is not a possibility. But instead of giving way to hatred or anger, the, disciple, the noble disciples, they still chose to radiates loving kindness and compassion towards the perpetrator. So this is the difference between us and the noble disciple. The last type of uh, right speech is abstaining from idle chatter. Samfa Fala Veramani. He avoids idle chatter and abstains from it, speaks at the right time in accordance with facts, speaks what is useful, speaks of the Dharma and the discipline. His speech is like a treasure uttered at the right moment, accompanied by reason, moderate, and full of sense. Uh, firstly, we should distinguish between idle chatter and some chat that builds a rapper. Usually, Shifu says, uh, when someone talks to him, he tried to build that rapper with that person you know, by asking how is his day, how is his week. And then when that rapper, that connection is built, that person is more likely to open up to his or her problem. Here, the idle chatter is more like talking nonsense or gossiping. Yeah. So when... And again, this is also quite prevalent among colleagues. And also, my past circle of friends, they were pretty chronic gossipers. <laughs> so recently, I have shifted towards a more different circle of friends where at least not many of, not many of them tends to gossip. They still do. It's a human's nature to talk about people. But the frequency is much less, just like uh, cursing. Uh, so gradually, I steer my environment towards a much less 
hostile, much less gossiping circle or environment. Mm. Okay. Biko Bodhi put a one extra note here. In the modern times, avoiding exposure to the idle chatter, constantly bombarding us through the new media of communication created by modern tech, an incredible array of devices, television, radio, newspaper, top journals, and the cinema, turns out a continuous stream of needless information here. Yeah. At the time this book is written, the internet is not so prevalent yet. The social media is not so prevalent yet. That's why Bikubodi, I think, did not include smartphones here. But the principles is still true. A continuous stream of needless information, distracting entertainment, the net effect of which is to leave the mind passive, fecund, and sterile. Let's take a look sterile is yes. yeah the first division not able to produce our children or young second is free from bacteria but I think Biko body mean it more okay I think this definition fits in lacking in imagination creativity or excitement uninspiring or unproducive. All these developments, namely accepted as progress, threaten to blunt our aesthetic and spiritual sensitivities and deafen us to the higher call of the contemplative life. Okay. I'm not sure if it is happening to you guys, but I feel like recently my attention span is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Why? Because whenever I whip up my phone, there's a lot of very attention-grabbing entertainment. The reason is Ambles, YouTube shorts, uh, TikTok video, uh, Instagram story and Instagram reels. Yeah. All this entertainment like, is very attention-grabbing and it's very short and it can keep you entertained for many, many hours. As a result, this is what become body matching. Leave the mind pa passive, fecund, and sterile. And whenever I, if I compare it to, if I watch the movies that I used to love <laughs> in the past, somehow it does feel like I cannot focus 100% anymore and I will not enjoy it as much as in the past. Yeah. I think this is the result of a modern internet era where all kinds of media will try to grab your attention as much as possible with all this very short burst entertainment. So I think it's a very insidious effect of the internet. Okay, that's it for the right speech, review of the right speech. Any questions or comments? Yes, Sister Simpi. I just want to ask the mothers and fathers here, how do you handle um, not saying harsh speech, especially to your children? <laughs> so any advice? Okay, any of you? Choi Kwan, Billy, uh, Sister I came. Yeah, it's um, to children, yes, a bit tough. Especially uh, to my own children, they were quite okay because the other last time they were very obedient. But nowadays, like handling my grandchildren is really tough. They really talk back to you. So the only way is to uh, show them the result. You know, the, uh, if you were to go on hit on with them and then school them or say anything they will always be very defensive and also become more um, aggressive towards you so the only way is to show them example and then uh, 
talk to them in 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 a in a way and then show them the examples and things like that. So if not, then we we'll just uh, leave them alone and then uh, maybe take away certain things that they like. That if you have done something wrong, and then we we'll just remove one of the, just like my daughter. If he's not doing his job, he'll remove one of his favorite toy, the car. He likes the toys, toy car. You just remove the toy car one by one. Then he will listen. Yeah, that's the way we do it. Thanks. Okay. Um, may I add on to... Uh, actually, because for my personal, I only have one son which is quite easy to handle. <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe children like Sister Chokan say, children of the past are more obedient. See? Um, but I worked with children before, especially those primary school children. Um, you try to actually make friends with them and then catch them when they are good. You don't always pinpoint on the bad things that they do. If they, they did something good, you, you talk to them about you know, what, what are the things that they have done which are good. Then they tend to share with you more often. Uh, like parents will come to me, how come I don't know? You know? My children will tell you this and that. And they really share with you their likes and dislikes, which I think uh, as parents, sometimes we miss that. We always focus on, hey, you do homework, you do homework. You know. Then when we want to talk to the children, we give them time, like five, in only five, 10 minutes, they will share with you all the things that they, they do with their friends, you know, give them the opportunity. A lot of times as parents, we don't, we go straight into, you must finish your homework, you must do this, you must do that, you must prepare. So you, you actually miss out the opportunity of going into the, the child circle. So we actually did that with our uh, children under our care because uh, we do run a, uh, student care and child care. And these people love to talk to us and all sorts of things. They even share about what the parents do at home <laughs> sometimes. Uh, so, you know, try to catch them when they are good, like I would say. Hey, very interesting. Well, Billy, anything to add? Okay, so thanks for sharing, Chai Kwan and I Kim. Is, is that helpful, Sister Singri? Yeah, I think that's uh, definitely helpful because like what uh, Sister I Kim is saying, we just jump into wanting them to complete whatever needs to be completed. Yeah. And, and then because they kind of repeatedly do the same thing, then so, so then, you know, over time, then you, you uh, start to boil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, then as, as we're going through the passage, it's like, oh dear, then uh, how do I manage this, you know, not, I mean, yeah, reframing from saying all oh, the harsh, harsh speech, yep. It's interesting that I noticed, uh, yeah, Chekhan mentioned uh, her kids were obedient, so there was no much issue, and I came sons too. But the children of the current generation is much more rebellious. I wonder <laughs> what makes the difference. Why is the current generation is so <laughs> not obedient, so to speak? I, I think it's because of the social media now they have more, you know, and then they want more freedom. And then now parents have less children as well. So they pamper the kids more. Ah. Whereas in olden days, they, they have at least like four to five kids, but not me like three, <laughs> but uh, they are more um, not so pampered. Like my children, they don't get a lot of toys. They will build their own toys. Well, nowadays, they all have all kinds of, you know, playthings and all kinds of devices. They're given handphone, iPad, everything. So I think that is the reason. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah. I think kids are probably too pampered these days. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think my view always compare with the friends. Ah. Yeah. They will say that, oh, you know, I, I mean, currently for my boys, I will ask them to uh, um, pass their phone to me before they go to bed. Then you will now uh, say, oh, nobody does that nowadays. 
why can't you be normal like other parents? Yeah, like I'm the abnormal ones, you know, yeah. Uh, you know what's the usual response? Uh, then you become their, their parents' kids. Huh? <laughs> uh, you like their parents so much? Yeah, yeah, you go become, go to that family. Okay, that's quite interesting. Parents and kids relationship. Uh, which hopefully I don't have to deal with. <laughs> Okay, that was an interesting discussion. Thanks for raising the question, Sister Singwe. Thanks, Chai Kwon and I came for contributing. Anything else? No more comments. Let's do a dedication. Yen Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Yen De Zhe Hui Zhen Ming Liao. Here we meet again. May we be guided by the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Have a gentle speech Sunday. Okay, thanks everyone for participating. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Mr. Have a good rest. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, rest well and hydrate. Okay, take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.